In 2022, the most anticipated new Batman is finally here. It's Halloween again, and the mayor of Gotham City is plotting how he can get re-elected. But he doesn't want a mysterious killer to appear behind him silently. At the same time as the mayor is killed, there are crimes happening in all corners of Gotham City. Batman is too busy to deal with them all. But the huge symbol of the bat light projected in the night sky is enough to deter the bad guys and make most of them restrained by fear. Meanwhile, an Asian passenger is being attacked by a group of bad guys who have painted their faces to look like the Joker. Batman slowly steps out of the darkness with heavy strides. The punk who didn't even know Batman became the first target to be beaten up. It is said that the newborn cow is not afraid of the tiger, and the others want to bully the few with the many, only to find that they are really too weak when they fight. After Batman in the lead of Detective Gordon, involved in the investigation of the murder of the mayor. The murder scene in addition to Gordon, other police officers are hostile to Batman. After attacking the mayor, the killer not only cut off his thumb, but also left the words don't lie in a coded letter at the scene. When Batman wanted to investigate deeper, the police chief came to the scene and blew Batman away. Before leaving, Batman met with the man who found the body, who is also the mayor's only son. From his body, Batman saw his young and helpless self. Back in the Batcave, Batman stored the information collected by the invisible camera into the computer. Together with Alfred, the butler, they deciphered the coded letter and finally found that the answer was drive. After that, Batman and Gordon together to the mayor's garage investigation. And in one of the luxury car found a USB flash drive and the dead man was cut off the thumb. The flash drive stored a large number of intimate photos of the deceased and a beautiful woman. The mayor's image of a good family man that he had worked so hard for collapsed instantly. A man in the background of the photos caught the attention of Batman and Gordon, the man nicknamed Penguin, is the right-hand man of Gotham's godfather Falcone, running an entertainment venue called the Iceberg Club. Immediately after the two found that the moment they connected to the computer, the photos on the USB drive were automatically sent to the major media, and soon the whole city would know the real face of the mayor. Batman broke into the Iceberg Club alone, easily disposing of the henchmen who tried to intercept him along the way and confronting the cunning penguin. Batman tries to ask the penguin for information about the woman who was photographed with the late mayor. But Penguin is clearly unwilling to tell him. During the conversation, Batman notices a woman at the club who is similar in age and dressed to the target he is looking for, and pays particular attention to the photo he shows the Penguin. So he followed the woman to her place and found that the girl in the photo, Annika, was hiding in the woman's house at this time. After briefly calming the girl, she changed into her night clothes and went out, and Batman then realized that she was none other than Catwoman. Catwoman went out all night to retrieve her friend's passport that had been seized. Batman showed up after seeing Catwoman's professional approach to stealing passports, and the two had a brief encounter. Catwoman confesses that because Annika's information had been exposed, Catwoman had planned to take Annika and run away. The two then returned to Catwoman's place together, only to find the room violently damaged and Annika nowhere to be found. At the same time, a video is shown on TV. The murderer of the mayor strikes again, calling himself the Riddler, and the police chief is also killed. He also let it slip that more bad guys would end up the same as the police chief. One to investigate the murder case, one to investigate the whereabouts of friends, Batman and Catwoman choose to temporarily team up. From Catwoman, Batman learns that there is a hidden version of the Iceberg Club. It was a place of pleasure for Gotham's upper-class elite, and it was there that the late mayor met Annika. Batman took the time to see the body of the police commissioner. The Riddler left Batman a riddle, after deciphering the meaning of the winged mouse. The next day, Catwoman enters the Iceberg Club wearing an invisible camera given to her by Batman. It has a face recognition function, which helps Batman to know the identity of the people Catwoman sees in time. One of the prosecutors caught the attention of Batman. At his request, Catwoman looked at the prosecutor a few more times, and was surprised to be misunderstood by the other party as being interested in him. Catwoman had no choice but to take a seat and have a drink with the prosecutor. Another escort at the same table inadvertently brought up the matter of Annika, then realized that she had said the wrong thing and hurriedly left the table. Catwoman immediately followed and left despite Batman's advice to ask the escort about Annika, but was flatly refused. At that moment, Penguin came in with his boss Falcone and bumped into Catwoman. Falcone acted quite close to Catwoman, and the two seemed to be old acquaintances. Catwoman's intentional concealment caused Batman's displeasure. After the two became suspicious of each other, Catwoman took down the camera and broke off contact with Batman, thus ending the investigation. The next day, Batman attended the mayor's funeral as Bruce Wayne. In the middle of the funeral, a runaway car drove in, 
knocking over many tables and chairs and nearly causing a mass casualty. The driver of the car is the same prosecutor who pulled Catwoman for a drink the night before. It turns out that he was kidnapped as soon as he left the nightclub. And it was the Riddler who kidnapped him. The prosecutor had a bomb strapped around his neck and was forced to drive into the funeral because he was under duress. In addition, he had a cell phone that kept ringing in his hand and carried a letter to Batman on his person. Bruce quietly completes his costume and speaks to the Riddler as Batman. The Riddler said that he would help the prosecutor disarm the bomb if he guessed three riddles correctly. With Batman's help, the first two riddles are easily solved, and the riddles point to the fact that the prosecutor is corrupt. But the third riddle involves a specific bribe and the person who manipulated him, and he refuses to say anything. Finally, the bomb explodes and Batman is affected. A group of police officers surround the unconscious Batman, saying that he has just obstructed the rescue of the hostages and want to take the opportunity to reveal his true nature. Fortunately, Batman woke up in time, and the two sides had a disagreement and a big fight. Gordon asked his colleagues to give him a face, and he was responsible for persuading Batman to surrender. In fact, he quietly gave Batman the door key, so that Batman pretended to attack him and then find the opportunity to escape. Batman escaped to the top floor and finally escaped using his own paraglider. Now that Annika's clue is broken, Batman has to look for clues in the second riddle given by the Riddler. After talking with Gordon, he came to a conclusion, Penguin is highly suspect. Batman and Gordon track down the Penguin, who is making a drug deal, and Catwoman arrives on the scene. She came to the warehouse to steal the cash, but inadvertently found the remains of Annika, who had been brutally murdered. Just then, the two were discovered by Penguin's men, enemy firepower was fierce, and Batman also revealed his killer Batmobile. The Penguin soon fell behind and were caught by Batman. At Penguin's prompt, Batman enters a text chat page, and the Riddler gives the clue orphan this time. Batman immediately rushed to the abandoned orphanage, where he believed that there would be clues to the next victim, and perhaps he could save them before the Riddler could do so. The orphanage is showing images of Batman's father, Thomas Wayne, during his lifetime. Thomas ran for mayor more than two decades ago. If not for his sudden death, he would have had a very high chance of being elected, and his passion for public service was an important plus for Thomas' mayoral campaign. The abandoned orphanage had long been funded by the Wayne family, and Thomas had brought his wife and children to visit the orphanage to express their condolences. On the orphanage's walls, Father Pei's son is written in messy handwriting. If the promise to continue to fund the orphanage and failed to deliver, is Thomas Wayne debt, then at this moment the need to pay the debt is Bruce. Batman rushed to Wayne Manor, while constantly trying to contact Alfred by phone. Unfortunately, by the time he got back, it was still too late. Wayne Manor was attacked by the Riddler mail bomb. Alfred was seriously injured and hospitalized. It turns out that Alfred opened the delivery from the Riddler and took the damage for Batman. Bruce was very angry, and after returning to Wayne Manor alone, he began to compile all the Riddler-related cases so far, trying to find out how his family was related to the series of cases. At this point he receives a request for a meeting from Catwoman. Batman, who could lose his only family member at any moment, can finally appreciate Catwoman's grief and anger over Annika's death. The two comfort each other and Catwoman reveals her true identity. Her mother, Maria, also provided services at the club back then. And her biological father was none other than Falcone. A slightly calmer Batman continues to work on solving the mystery. Meanwhile, the Riddler took it upon himself to reveal more information to the network. Bruce's mother Martha's family has a history of mental illness, and Martha herself has been treated for mental illness for a long time. More than 20 years ago, a reporter tried to expose the matter, but was killed by Thomas and Falcone. And now Bruce needs to pay off his family's debt. Bruce was incredulous about all this and ran to Falcone for confirmation. Falcone admits that it is true, and that he and Thomas were best friends back in the day. When Thomas received that reporter blackmail, had spoken to him for help. Although Thomas did not explicitly state that he wanted to kill the journalist, but since he gave the matter to Falcone, he must have been prepared for his style and scale of action. The reporter's expose came at a critical time in Thomas' mayoral campaign, and Falcone suspected that his nemesis, Moroni, was behind the reporter's expose. The two crime families, Falcone and Moroni, were evenly matched. Moroni feared that once Thomas, who was close to Falcone, was elected mayor, he would no longer be able to stand up to Falcone. The journalist's death was soon followed by the assassination of the Waynes. Falcone suspects Moroni of the murder, and the Waynes become the victims of a battle between two crime families. Bruce's years of searching for the truth finally came to a head, when Alfred was also out of danger. When visiting Alfred, Bruce told him what Falcone had deduced, not expecting Alfred to deny it all. 
He told Bruce that Thomas would never take someone's life for his own future. He wanted to stop the reporter from breaking the story in order to protect his wife and children from gossip. The kind-hearted man could not possibly wish to see anyone get killed as a result. When Thomas learned that the reporter had been killed, he was so remorseful that he chose to call the police and actively cooperate with the investigation in the first place. But shortly after he called the police, he and Martha were both killed. Alfred has actually deduced that the real mastermind behind the Wayne couple's murder is Falcone. But for Bruce's protection, he has not told him the truth. Bruce's mood is like a roller coaster ride, when he saw the bat lights on, thought it was Gordon calling Batman, rushed to rendezvous. After meeting, Gordon thought that Batman was calling him. The two went to the rooftop of the Gotham Police Department together and discovered that the original signal was sent by Catwoman. She captures the cop who killed Annika and wants Batman and Gordon to witness the execution. Batman tried desperately to stop Catwoman, not wanting her to kill people. Catwoman pulls out her cell phone recording, which records Annika's screams as she dies. Through the recording, the three discover that the real killer is Falcone, who strangled Annika by his own hands. Batman also learned from the recording that the Riddler's riddle, the so-called winged mouse turned out to refer to Falcone. Catwoman then also realized that her mother, who was also strangled to death when she was seven years old, should also be Falcone's death, she decided to go to Falcone to settle the score. Batman and Gordon teamed up to save the cop who was kicked off the building by Catwoman. Then split up and launch a counterattack on Falcone. By this time, Catwoman had gotten back to the Iceberg Club first. She took the opportunity to be alone with Falcone and prepared to wait for an opportunity to strike, but she was not expected to be subdued instead. At the critical moment, Batman came to Catwoman's rescue, but also to prevent her from killing Falcone. Although into the hands of Batman, but Falcone is not worried at all. Even if Gordon had already made the recording of his killing of Annika public, he still believed that with the contacts he had made over the years, he would be acquitted in the end. Walking out of the club's doors, Falcone was greeted by a large team of Gotham police officers standing by. The Riddler serial murder case has raised too much attention, and the Gotham Police Department, which has always been played by the mob, does not dare to play favorites this time. The Penguin, who had long wanted to set up his own business, saw that Falcone's power was gone and openly mocked him. The scene gradually got out of hand, and Penguin even tried to pull out a pistol and shoot Falcone. After a gunshot, Falcone had fallen in a pool of blood. The real culprit is not Penguin, but a mysterious sniper in a nearby house. A group of police officers quickly rushed to the sniper site, and found the place has long been empty. But based on the items in the room, they quickly locked in the identity of the room's owner, an accountant named Edward, who turned out to be the Riddler. Someone soon reported a sighting of Edward the Riddler in a nearby coffee shop. An ordinary white-collar office worker, he did not have three heads and six arms, and even looked a little more mediocre than ordinary people. Faced with a police siege, the Riddler was captured and placed in Arkham Asylum. Batman went to visit, and found that Edward already knew his true identity as Bruce Wayne. Also an orphan, Bruce can get everyone's attention and sympathy, while Edward and the other children in the orphanage are left to starve. The Riddler says he is Batman to thank for inspiring him and showing him how powerful fear can be. By spreading fear, he was able to force everyone to focus on the truth about the corruption in the upper echelons of Gotham. By bringing Batman into this case, he was to further add a concrete incarnation of fear. Because although abstract fear can awaken the people, but the people will shrink back and continue to remain too angry and too afraid to speak when someone as powerful as Falcone moves his fingers. So the Riddler wants to introduce Bruce Wayne, a more ruthless person than Falcone, only his money, force, wisdom, to directly crush Falcone such bad guys. The Riddler invites Batman to stay with himself to watch the next big show. The Riddler was extremely disappointed when Batman, however, had no concept of the so-called big show. It turns out that Batman did not crack his own final riddle. Realizing that the Riddler still has a trick up his sleeve, Batman rushes back to the Riddler's place and finds that the murder weapon from the mayor's murder at the very beginning, the carpet shovel, is the key to solving the final mystery. Batman used the murder weapon to lift up the carpet of the Riddler's residence and discover the Riddler's entire plan. Although the Riddler had been captured, it was the day the new mayor was elected, and he had long since parked seven bomb cars along the seawall. A few moments later the bombs exploded, cracking several reservoirs and water pipes and quickly flooding the low-lying areas of Gotham City. Meanwhile, another group of Riddlers armed with sniper rifles intended to create a shooting incident at the festival site. With little time left, Batman rushes to the festival site and fights alone against a group of thugs dressed exactly like the Riddler. Surrounded and under attack, Batman gets help from Catwoman at a critical moment. 
As a result, Catwoman was soon in danger and was wounded. The wounded Batman gave himself an injection of adrenaline in order to save Catwoman in time. Afterwards, he nearly killed the thug who attacked Catwoman alive with his bare hands. When the thug was arrested by the police and questioned about his identity, he said, I am an Avenger. Batman was very shocked because the words were exactly the same as the ones he said at the beginning of the movie. That's when he saw the mayor and others trapped in the flood and about to be submerged by the water. Batman bravely jumped into the water to actively participate in the rescue. Previously, he only focused on getting rid of the bad guys and never saved anyone. Therefore, in the face of his outstretched helping hand, everyone was very hesitant. Only the innocent child was the most fearless and took the initiative to hold Batman's hand. Then the mayor and others also accepted Batman's rescue. At this point, the end of the film overlaps with the beginning. Although the first appearance of Batman saved people, but the rescued people are very wary of him. And at this point I believe the public has a renewed appreciation for Batman, more grateful and less fearful. After the events of the Riddler, Catwoman invited Batman to leave Gotham City with him and live happily ever after together. Unexpectedly, Batman refused Catwoman's invitation. He wanted to stay and do his best to change the city that had been hopelessly damaged. Gotham City in the movie is undoubtedly synonymous with darkness, gloom, filth and terror. All the important scenes all take place at night, pouring rain, dirty sidewalks, hiding in the shadows waiting for the opportunity to move criminals, all of this is frightening. Many people, like Catwoman, feel that Gotham City is not going to change. But Bruce Wayne drove his Batmobile into the darkness of Gotham City, full of hope for the future. Just like in the movie, the rain eventually stopped and the clouds let in a little bit of light.